turn it towards the camera. <laughs> What's up, skidding? <laughs> What's up, Chavez? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Your boy Chavez here. All right, so today we're doing a little show and tell. You see what's happening here. It's like a little squid thing. You can't, he's translucent though. They put some dye in there. In person, it's really, really cool. And then skittens, of course, you see that. Hello. That is a little blowfish. But uh, yeah, so this is the fancy series. Uh, this one is oddities, the fancy, this is part of the fancy series. That's what we're expecting from this video. It's a yes. bunch of stuff like that. A bunch of weird stuff. My house is not full of like a bunch of creepy, dark vibe stuff. It's like a normal house, but then when you open drawers. <laughs> you just find stuff somewhere, <laughs> not pictured. Yeah. I have a coin purse that's made out of like a real frog. frog. But it's an invasive species. Right. So it's okay that we use his corpse as a purse. He also has googly eyes and you can see his booty hole. That is too much information. <laughs> Here we go. Brought to you by NordVPN. What's he delivering? What's in the box, Jared? What's in the box? Oh. Me? Oh, I'm in the box. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> You've completed the crash course on theater and wine, mm -hmm. have you? Feeling smug, are we? A little, a little bit. bit. Deserving of love, perhaps? I mean, Worthy of yeah. eye contact. That's cute. But there's still a lot more work to be done. <laughs> Look here. These shoes Loafers. are made from real Italian leather. This bag Cow. is made from the leather of real Damn. Italians. Not impressed? How about this fur coat? It's made from the wolf of Wall Street. Uh, An Xbox with the original PT demo yeah. still installed. A signed first edition copy of Moby Dick with its little known sequel, Moby Ball. <laughs> and last but not least, the squid, squid. from Squid Game. Squid. Don't you get it? Oddities, weird stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the first section's on perfume. It's not going to level with you. I kind of got distracted. Oh, God. And uh, it's, it's we went off topic. It's the first I don't even one. know what this is about anymore. Here's my Netflix stand up special. It should explain everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be a hard act to follow. That Kramer guy has some very good one liners. <laughs> oh, my God. You don't know who Kramer is, do you? He was in uh, Seinfeld? He used to do stand-up. They would invite him to do stand-up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he was getting maybe heckled. Maybe there were people in the crowd talking. Mm -hmm. But they were all black. And he just started yelling, the N-words, the N-words, the, the N-words, over and over again. That's what he's referring to. Cold-blooded man, internet historian. Cold-blooded man. That's going to be a hard act to follow. That Kramer guy has some very good one-liners. <laughs> but I've got some jokes lined up. <clears throat> Question. Why is perfume so expensive? Because it comes from Because you have to you. pay perfume. Ah. 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 There's something there. That's a good one. Yeah, you could work that one out. Why do they call it Cologne? Have you ever smelt one of those? It ain't great. P U. Oh. All right. Mike must not be working. Uh, <laughs> deodorant in this market? I'd want a deodorant buy. Uh -oh. Is this thing on? <laughs> okay, let me tell you the story of perfume. Okay. See, to be fancy, people wanted to stink good, mm -hmm. but people naturally stink bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's science. So in the beginning, people went to the garden to find the best smelling things that they could. Here's a photo of the oldest perfume bottles ever found. Oh, that's cool. And what's inside? Just garden stuff that smells nice. Yeah, all right. But we did not just stop at that, because the story of perfume is the story of progress. By the time Cleopatra came around, perfume science had really advanced. Mm -hmm. You see, Cleopatra loved perfume. In fact, it was said that she had a whole perfume factory. That's cool. The 
olfactory, I believe they called it. <laughs> But this factory wasn't just mashing flowers. They were using emulsifiers, adding resins, right. creating tinctures. Cleopatra's very own Chanel No. 1 contained cardamom, cinnamon, olive oil, and myrrh. So we've gone from garden to pantry. I was going to say, that bitch smelled like a baked good. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny, actually. You Which also talk. reminds me of when I <laughs> I had come up with my signature scent. Right. Okay? And I'd layered all these scents, and mm -hmm. I knew, I knew I smelled good. You made your own little smelly smell. Yes. Yeah. Okay? And I went to Joanne's or something, and the guy behind me was just like, in my space, mm. and I couldn't figure out Standing why. Standing in your aura. Yes. I was like, mm. I was Hello like, there, lady. <laughs> How are you? People. And so then I looked at him, yeah. and he was like, you smell like an angel food cake. And I was mm. like, thanks. Angel I have to go now. Cake. Now I did smell your delectable. Your signature okay? smell is cake. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I was talking about it the other day, that mulch that they put in bathrooms. It's not. It's not. It's the ground-up mulch it's that they put on like a pot. Pulpery. It's not mulch. Yeah, it is mulch. It is literally it's things from the ground. Stop calling it mulch. Grounded up in a bowl. Oh, my but God. But that stuff is like, that's the smell of like, uh, you know, your grandparents. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Stinky mulch. <laughs> Play it. He loved spritzing the stuff everywhere, mm -hmm. supposedly even spraying it all over the sails of her ship. That way, people could smell her from miles off as she sailed the night. That's cute. Uh, I'd hate to be on there. By the early Middle Ages, we had figured out the formula for perfume. Effectively, there are three main components. Mm -hmm. Water, alcohol, and the most important bit, the aromatic oils. Right. And by the way, perfume and cologne are actually the same thing, but in different ratios of these ingredients. Oh. And by the 1600s, they were trying all sorts of different, yeah, different ratios. Thank you. All right, the tone, term cologne has become a catch-all for masculine scents and perfumes for ladies, but there's more to it. Men are typically more physical and sweat more than women, which means if you're wearing a spray that's 25% oil, you're going to get sticky and gross. True. So over time, cologne became the better option for men. Women don't have the same problem that you know of. You don't know how much I sweat. And high oil content in perfume has the advantage of evaporating slower, so it doesn't need to be reapplied as often. Naturally, with dudes all buying the cologne and women all buying the perfume, the cologne scents all trended masculine, perfumes feminine. Also, ratios are averages. There's also eau de toilette, which is 10% oil, and eau de parfum which is 17.5% oil. It's so satisfying to hear you say Frenchy things. <laughs> Didn't know that, cool. I always wondered what the difference was and I kind of just thought sexism. There was none, exactly. Yeah. You kind of go, <laughs> masculine has square bottles. Yeah. Women have circular bottles. Yeah, and also, please note, Axe is none of these. Right. Axe is not perfume, Does cologne, not or either the ugs. They know it is. It's now just, it is. Uh. Just be, stop replacing these things with Axe. Shh. It's not. It, it's bad. By the 1600s, they were trying all sorts of different things. Some things went well. Dude. Pine. Pine. <laughs> what about orange? I call it new car smell. Why are they so intense? But once global trade opened up, our tastes became more... Exotic. Mm. Out of the pantry and into the petting zoo. Oh. For you see, it oh, turns no. out that animals oh, have been hoarding all of the most bestest oh. perfume smells. Oh no. Yes. In the olden days, a bunch of manly men would brave very rough seas in order to pull aboard sperm whales. Right, I remember now, this. They would cut open the digestive tract right. and pluck out a secretion of bile called ambergris. Or in English, Grey amber. Sometimes they would harvest the rest of the whale, but eventually ambergris became so valuable that it was simply more ground. economical to dump the carcass back in the ocean and collect the Another next batch. One? Wow. Like when you kill a racehorse for its prize winning jizz and then just leave it there on the tracks. I don't think that's. All right, quick science what lesson, they do. Eggie. Oh my lordy, that was a lot to, to digest. I don't think that's what they do at all. A small amount of time. Um, we're wasteful. We're a bit wasteful. Oh my God. Is that what that part of the the uh, Avatar movie was about? With the whales and then harvesting the little parts of the whale oh, stuff? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, what a good reference that I didn't get until just now. 
Ambergris comes from the gross part of the whale. <laughs> and when the whale eats something quite sharp, let's say human bones, okay. the ambergris Sorry, forms skin. around them and protects the lining of the gut. Mm. That's the ambergris roll. That Got way, it. as the sharp thing continues down the intestines, the whale doesn't get poked. Right. But if ambergris comes from a whale's digestive tract, what does it smell like? Surely not good. When it's dry, it smells kind of woody and earthy. But when it's wet, it smells like ass. <laughs> but it's not actually the smell that's the useful function. Ambergris is a fixative. Well, so what it does is heighten and bring out the scent of other things. Oh. These flowers, they smell all right. right. But add some ambergris and, ah, oh, that's like the MSG. one. So somebody literally mixed whale poop in or whale secretion in mm -hmm. as uh, uh, the method to do this. How did you figure it out? I mean, we were just doing too much. Like That guy needs to slow down. But yeah, it's like MSG, but for smells. Yeah. Now, once they figured this out, they realized, oh, there's a whole bunch of things we can use a fixative right. for. Right. And like they got uh, quite gross with it. They added horse it parts. to food. Oh, Lord. In fact, it was said that King Charles's favorite dish was ambergris on eggs. Get the hell out of here. But they didn't stop there. They added it to rum. They added it to coffee. They added it to cigarettes and smoked oh, it. And hard. they used it as an aphrodisiac. That's now, fucking some disgusting. Some people will say that the whale is a mammal. But that's not strictly true. It is, in fact, a fish. Just look at the tail. <laughs> And you may have also heard that there are a lot fewer of them these days, mm -hmm. which, although a relief because their absence helps offset the sea level change climate, I, I whatever, don't think that's true. we were worried that we might run out. So we said no more hunting whales for amber. Mm -hmm. But did that stop the perfumers? No. no they immediately not. asked, hey, do you think there are any other animals that smell kind of weird? Yes. Turns out the musk deer has oh. some potential. Now, we hunt the male musk deer specifically because it has a particular gland okay, called cool. a musk pod. Next to his which, boss. when dried out, looks like this. And it uses it to mark its territory and attract oh, mates. Deer. Picking the calls. Now, don't worry. Unlike <laughs> ambergris, like this doesn't smell like ass. Mm. Instead, it smells like ammonia and piss. Oh, that's better. <laughs> you just can't get a smell like that at home. <laughs> this is so that's better. Why does so many things associated with perfume and cologne stink? I don't, I... Like, okay. it, it makes sense in concept, though, I guess you're right, because you would try to f isolate what makes the stinky so stinky. Yes. And then we just try to make it not stinky and put it on ourselves. Exactly. Yeah, that's not a terrible concept. It is disgusting, though. Yes. So we started hunting them to the point where they were a protected species. Wow, we have no chill. Oh. So the authority said... You have to find a different animal. And so from there, they moved on to Hyrax feces. One of the most feared and dangerous animals oh, yes. in all Terrifying. of Africa. And it was the inspiration for the original Lynx Africa smell. Now, their feces, when dried, is called Hyracium, or Africa stone. Stone. But it's not just these ones. They have other stones in Africa. Come on, guys. Now, the smell is fairly Stop similar to deer musk, but unlike the deer, the Hyrax doesn't need to be killed or disturbed for their feces. They're just giving it away. He said it smells like tobacco and wood. Bro, these guys were just out here with the <laughs> grossest noses subjecting people to just torture. That's horrifying. Hyrax even have a communal toilet, which is used for generations, which makes it very easy to collect up all the good stuff. They have generational shit piles. That was unfortunate. They have group gen... That's a Zafranc level fact, bro. But it's not just the Hyrax. I've got other animals. Remember those civets from the Varus videos? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, don't wash that thing's anus. Mom, mom, get the bottle, get the bottle. <laughs> Turns out it's the anal gland of the civet that's actually the important I smell. I thought there's going to be more anal glands involved in this. Who's yeah. figuring this out? Why don't they use the good parts of the animal? The, it's the bacon part of the bee. You know? Anyway, it's the ass that produces all the delicious musk. <laughs> it smells like shit. <laughs> Yeah. Ah! That makes sense to me. Why did he shoot a video of that? That makes sense to me. Bro, what is this? What is this? 
What is this listing for? Two thousand dollars. Oh my god! Must be good for something because it goes for four thousand dollars a kilo.、Mm. Wow! But we ain't done、Still、yet. Still earthy. You know when you've just killed a beaver and you cut open its ripe、oh. abdomen? Well, the reason it smells、right. so good is because of a little gland called the castor sac, which makes a yellowy scum-like substance、Ew. called castorium. And it is used to waterproof the beaver's fur coat and also mark its territory. Oh yeah, we did know that. It is also very fragrant, and you know what that means? If it smells, <laughs> it sells. And in this case, castorium is more kind of leathery with smoky hints of vanilla. But unfortunately, today you're not allowed to harvest the beaver.、Mm. They're walking around very smugly, just like the other protected animals. <laughs> But you know what? We don't need them. Because we have a synthetic version of castorium now,、oh, and it's、God. just as、Finally. good. And you know what? We've got a synthetic for the whale, the deer, and the civet now. Okay. And they're used in lots of mainstream perfumes. Modern day, we've got a. All right. So now we're out of the animal era and into the synthetic. So if you survive long enough to be here through that、uh, mass extinction event, Jesus. For perfumes,、uh, we finally hear. I mean, yeah, that's what he was doing, right? <laughs> Killing them off the planet. Day, we've got a synthetic version of practically everything, and even better, the advancement of synthetics has opened up a huge range of smells that were never possible to distill、yeah. or capture before.、Mm-hmm. And the result is some very silly perfumes. You know、okay. that bacon bit of the pig? We got that now. Windex <laughs> smelling, pretty much anything you can think of, really. <laughs> Someone、well. has created a fragrance of it.、Mm. In some instances, we're even beating nature herself.、Mm. For example, you know those roses that you get at the florist, and then people go, "Ah,、oh, these smell beautiful." But actually, those roses are not bred to smell good.、Mm. They're so specialized for good looks, longevity, and disease resistance that they've practically altogether lost their smell. Wow! So often, what the florist will do is add an additional、what? scent to the flower、wow. post picking. And typically, a synthetic rose perfume is used because it lasts longer and doesn't dry out the flower.、Mm. Yep, we're just that good. Yeah. And what's the future for perfumes? Well, I don't know. We're gonna start harvesting the glands of people. Ah,、uh, yeah, I think it's gonna involve transplants. We're gonna be putting glands from other things into us. So we permanently、oh, smell like other things. That makes more sense than、yeah. what I was talking about. That's not that we're talking about the same thing. No, I'm talking about taking our scent glands out no, and selling、not. them. No, you're not. Like you、you're、know not how you're talking about human smell. Yeah, because you know how you can, <laughs> um, you know how like you can sell your fucking、uh, your blood, right? Not your blood, the other stuff. Plasma. Plasma、right. and your platelets and shit. Right. You that, but for glands, take my scent glands. Mm-hmm. That's、It's, what I was talking about. But what you're talking about also. Makes a lot of sense. You know what? It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's kind of creepy and horrifying, but I don't think I like either one of these. I mean,、futures. I think we're onto something here. What I do know is it's going to involve some comedy gold. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, my wife asked me for Chanel number、no. five, and I was like,、huh, not right now. I'm watching the football. I knew it was football for、mm. some reason. You know, on the, like on the television. And he means soccer. You know what? I am gonna say it. <laughs> If it's good enough for Kramer, it's good enough for me. <gasps> Ad time. This Christmas, she works、right. in the big city. Busy professional. My career, this and that. But she's going <laughs> home for Christmas. Small towns are the worst. I'm a big city career gal. Born in Nordville. Oh my God!、Her. Are you okay? <laughs> I am now. And she's about to learn、oh, the love. meaning. Of Nordmas, the most VPNest time of year with a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you go to nordvpn.com/internetstorian, <laughs> soon I will have installed public Wi-Fi in all of Nordville,、like an、and once they use、out. it, their private data will be exposed.、Oh. Governor Craven's got this town by the balls, and I can't believe that big city company you work for works with him. Come on, we have to put up the Nordmas lights for the big Nordmas festival. <laughs> Completely <What? ignore> <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ice skating. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. But I'm a city girl. Girl, you sound like you're in love. I thought. I- <laughs> <laughs> He's not willing to say the N word, but he will mock the voice. Do it. But I'm a city girl. Girl, you sound like girl. you're in love. Is that you with a voice changer? Say、girl. the truth. Tell the truth. 
I thought I knew what Nordmus meant, but it means nothing without you. It's like the end of March. <laughs> it's always Nordmus time of year with Nord's huge discount on a two-year plan. Use the URL nordvpn.com slash internet story for a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's the best VPN in town. Damn, now crazy. I love small town. And I'm in love with Nordman. But I can't leave behind big city Korea. True love and a really good VPN don't come around too much. You gotta take a chance. Boss, I don't care about making partner at the firm anymore. That's crazy. I found my new home. Big public Wi-Fi is spreading across the city. Nordmus will be ruined. Ho, ho, ho. Need a hand? <laughs> How are we gonna stop him, Nordman? This is going weird. With this Nord themed brick. Oh! Oh! I love you, Nordman. And I love you, big city woman. Let's go home and watch the international Netflix catalog. It's a Nordmus miracle! That was just murder. The it solution was, just, was murder! It was just mur I was wondering how you're gonna wrap this up, you know, with the big evil Wi Fi Doug Digadome. You bricked it. You bricked him in the head. That's not even that's not even creative compared to the rest of the storyline. <laughs> Go to NordVPN.com oh slash Internet Historian to get a huge deal on a two-year plan plus four bonus Nordmus months. Oh, right. I, Ads over. I thought we were going to get, like, the extension. You got to wait till the next episode yeah. to kind of finish no. it up. Nah, man, we're... Dad. That ad makes me think about the time I nearly had a wife. Feels like a lifetime Don't you have ago a wife? now. <laughs> I was in Japan. Living the digital nomad lifestyle. Jesus. I had a startup selling seashells down by the seashore. <laughs> but I broke the one rule of being a digital nomad. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I got mad. Digitally. And that's when I saw her. It oh, was love at first sight. What the hell is that? I remember her <laughs> laugh. <laughs> oh my god. Her touch. Ew. Every morning, breakfast in bed. Monster Marlboro. But the truth was... That was literally I, your breakfast? Every was, morning. Except Marlboro's, it was Snickers, Snickers. bars. <laughs> and except for Monster, uh, it was Red Bull. Yeah, Red Bull so and this Snickers. So was, was, my breakfast was literally this, but completely different. Yeah, well, it's adjacent. <laughs> breakfast in bed. But God, the truth damn. was, I, I had no money. We couldn't live on love alone. Mm. So I left. And I bet you're wondering how I finally struck it rich. Mm -hmm. Well, truth is, I'm the guy Dude. who invented oh. the Joe Rogan podcast. Ah! So you did well. Once I became a gajillionaire, I went back to that beach to try and find her. But instead, oh I my hit her God. with my boat. Bro, what are you on right now? Are you... Why is there Are so much okay? murder? Like, listen, I'm here for the comedy. I'm giggling. All right, I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. You know what I'm saying? We've been partying this weekend. Got a little bit of a headache. And you're penetrating that. That fog. Oh. Right? Maybe don't use the word penetrate. The, the fog. It's a phrase. Penetrating the fog is a phrase. <laughs> ah, internet historian is penetrating me. Is what you're scared I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Oh. Maybe figuratively. Okay. But we'll continue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like... The undertone here is a little dark, and uh, I guess we'll call your friends. We care about you. We're always here to talk if you need us. Jeez. Never found her body, but she had a secret. One she took to her grave that I was sworn not to tell. That you put her in. She's not around, so... Dude, she was a mermaid! Come on, champ, we're going to Japan! Okay. And here's where it all begins. Okay. In the year 2022. Really? So recent? It's a Tuesday, probably. And local folklore researcher Hiroshi Kinoshita is looking up some fantastical animals in the National <laughs> Yokai Dictionary. Okay. It's like the bestiary from Witcher, right? Yeah. And he oh. comes across a photo negative of a mermaid mummy. Okay, where are we going? Oh my this? god, he says in Japanese. Upon seeing the mermaid, he knows that he must track it down. He must form a team. Researchers, assemble. Okay. So he gets together the best damn crew that he can from the <laughs> University of Science and <laughs> Arts at the Okiyama <laughs> Prefecture. <laughs> Right. And he plans to track down the mermaid mummy. Who's that man? Wherever it has escaped to. 
That's H two O. I recognize that. Mm -hmm. Now let's do the thing. R and R. <laughs> we got the little the pale black mermaid up there in the top left. Yes, Holly Bailey. Who is this man? I'm afraid it's a murderer. That's what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who he is. It doesn't take him long to figure out that it's being held at the Inuin Temple in Asakuchi. <laughs> so we got a man at Long to figure out that it's being held at the Inuin penguin. Temple. You know the one. So he struts up to the sacred building. And there at the back of the temple is a fireproof safe. And inside of that is an old wooden box. Okay. And inside the old wooden box was the mermaid. Okay. We found it. We found a real one. But where That's did it come terrifying. from? Yeah. Well, alongside the mermaid it? was a note that dated back from 1903, mm -hmm. and it said, a dried human fish, a.k.a. Nino, <laughs> was caught <laughs> almost dry. 300 years ago over in the seas of Tosa. Damn. It was then dried out and taken to Osaka. <laughs> in the dryer. And from there, it was passed around to many different people until it arrived at the temple. Now, the Ningyo have an important history in Japan, and sightings of these half-fish, half-human creatures that's, have cropped up all across the country. That's yeah, terrifying. That's real half-fish, half-person. Not, yeah. not the stuff we're doing. They're not half-stepping. Right. That's a fish back if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Kinoshita himself had personally tracked down 13 of them all across Japan, Good usually God. kept in museums and temples. Those are little monkeys. However, what you might not know is that traditionally they have been associated so with bad omens. Aye. And everyone knows the infamous tale of Yao Bikuni. Oh, we all do. You know But it. I'll recite it to you just in case. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So the story is that one day a poor fisherman catches the biggest fish of his life. They are terrible. It was a strange looking fish. And its head was almost human-like. Mm -hmm. But he brought the fish home and invited all of his friends and family to come over for a feast to celebrate his largest catch. You know, he's got his arms stretched out like this. He's like, it was this big. No, it was this big. I swear, it was this big. During dinner, one of the guests sneaks into the kitchen to see just how big it was. This big? I can't believe it. And Nose he discovers yes. that it is actually a Ningyo. Oh no, he says in perfect Japanese. <laughs> and he quickly warns the other guests, don't eat it. And he warns them just in time. Taishi. They've got their fork like right up to their mouth. Yeah. Taishi eating that. Taishi, don't do it. <laughs> they throw all their food away. Damn. Let's just have some rice and drink the night away. Mm. Okay. So they do. And they have a lovely evening. However, Who eats one it? very dishonorable guest decided to sneak a bit of the meat out of the trash and put it in his pocket. Okay. What? He then goes home drunk and falls asleep. Uh -huh. He okay. didn't eat it. Fish meat in but the pocket. But when he woke up the next morning, he checks his pockets and... <sighs> no! The delicious fish piece is gone. Turns it? out, in the night, his daughter had been rummaging around in his pockets looking for treasure, and she found the meat from his pocket. And she was such a greedy guts that she decided to eat it then and there. The father was terrified for his daughter, but she didn't seem to be sick. Do you feel weird at all? He was shaking her. He decided okay. not to tell her anything. Okay. Maybe it'll all be okay. No. However, from that day forward, the daughter never aged. Mm. That's right. She remained a young adult forever. Damn, that sucks. She eventually went on to marry, but as her husband got older, she stayed the same age. Mm. Eventually her father got old and died. Damn. Wow. And soon enough did her husband too. Everyone she ever knew was getting older and dying, so but she remained the same age. She was immortal. Eventually, at age 120, she decided to shave her head and become a Japanese nun. Ooh, okay. She traveled the country planting trees as she went. And she did this for 800 years. Damn. Wow. But eventually, she grew tired. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You know what? I'm tired of living. She entered a cave in her hometown of Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and she was determined to never come out again. Okay. She begged and prayed for the curse to end.
but it never did. Mm-hmm. Eight、mm-hmm. hundred numbers used that figuratively means ad infinitum. Okay, so she's、forever. just she's big number old is what they mean. She sat in that cave for so long that she turned to stone. Damn. Damn. And today, at the Kuinji Temple in Obama, remains the cave that Yao Bakuni entered. Huh? People have been into that cave to check whether she's still in there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but nothing was found. Uh-huh. However, a stone statue of her resides at the entrance. Close enough. And colloquially, it is called the Bar Rock Obama. <laughs> so we're back with. <laughs> it just like sprinkles in a little misinformation, just in case you're not、just、paying attention. Just in case. But also,、yeah. if that other dude hadn't stopped everybody,、uh-huh. she wouldn't have been alone. There'd have been a whole group of people. There'd have been a whole group of people. People, yeah. And then she wouldn't have been lonely. So then it's his fault, is what you're saying. Yeah. What an incredible mind you have. You, <laughs> you are actually the only person I've heard actually use their English degree in a way that I can respect. That you constantly say the most <laughs> incredulous thing, and it's not unsensible. It's not not sensible. But it is uncomfortable. Now, to be fair, she might not have gotten any of the fish, so then she wouldn't be immortal and be everybody else that would be、You're、immortal.、Correct. But I'm just saying. You're a villain. Yeah, <laughs> I like your accoutrement. You look very fancy, but it's 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 hiding just a. I want it to look fancy because we're doing the fancy video. I see.、Yeah. Damn, that's a good one.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's hiding a real dark secret. <laughs> There's a real dark street. I'm just、got. saying, maybe her dad would have brought her some leftovers,、yeah. and then they all could have lived together. Yeah, Barack Obama. So we're back with Hiroshi. Okay. He asked the Inuin Temple if he could borrow the Nino. Look, let me do a little CT scan on it, right? And they agreed. Hiroshi hands the Nino to a team of scientists, and they get to work. They do their tests. Beep beep boop. Control plus <laughs> scan on the keyboard, and. Here are the results. It's stage four cancer. Damn.、Oh, so sorry. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh no. No, but really, turns out the Nino dates back to the 1800s.、Mm. The note that said it was from the 1700s was wrong.、Mm. Its body、no. is made from cloth and cotton,、mm. wrapped in puffer fish skin.、Ah. The tail was made from a croaker. I don't know what that is.、Okay. Did we show that on the screen with the <laughs> mouth of a different fish. And the hair of a mammal. Oh, told you. And、Monkey. they can see that there's a metal nail in its back. Oh, <coughs> oh my God! It's invented tools. I. <laughs> the forensic analysis and the construction materials in its back did cast some doubt over its authenticity.、Uh, a little. Yeah. But you gotta believe in something, damn it. <laughs> I. As promised, the Nino was returned to the Enuin、so、Temple,、funny. where it still lives today. That's. But、cool. where, oh where, did my mermaid go? <gasps> It's her. God, you're, she you're is hideous. Ooh, you know、Lord. what? I, I kind of missed you. And oh, what the hell is、God. that? Oh, my God, Daddy. Oh, oh, Lord. Jesus. <laughs> you know what? I never did find her again. I think these things are a big myth. <laughs> oh no. In the pot. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! We're here on the ancient streets of Cairo. Okay. And there is our destination. Right, Egyptian gods. In、Godfather. these triangles, the greatest luxury that all the elites crave.、Mm. Oh God! No, no, not not that. Oh. The, the second most thing <laughs> that mummies. Yeah. You can find them in these tombs, and there's only ever like one dude guarding them.、Mm-hmm. But before we take, we must understand. Mama, can you still go into pyramids? I have no idea.、Would、I would love go, to, though. You would like to go inside of one? Yes. Oh, I would hate to go inside. I would love to. That'd be so cool. Oh yeah, never going with you. But if you can go, feel free. Take a video or something for me. I want to see. We must understand. Yeah. Mummification started over five thousand years ago. It was first discovered by、wow. the Europeans in the fifteenth century. And then they used to、But、eat them. The legend、them. goes the locals knew about them even earlier than that. It's an elaborate process, but essentially, you're drying the person out, <laughs> turning them into a human salami. Human right, salami. So when the Europeans found all these mummies, they, what do you think they did? They unwrapped it. Well, put it in a museum, right? No. Wrong. 
They used these mothers for everything. Yeah. And everybody wanted them. Mm -hmm. What do you mean they used them for everything? Well, fancy people would take yeah, whole mummies terrible. and show them off to their friends at fancy dinners. To really show off the owner's wealth, they would sometimes unwrap That's them too. That's so fucking wrong. They were used as paint. Mm -hmm. They call this mummy brown, by the way. <laughs> they uh -oh. were used as fertilizer. <gasps> oh man, talk about supercharging your soil. <laughs> they were even consumed. Don't mind if I do. No, that not like this. Is By grinding them up into powder and taking them like a herbal supplement, mm -hmm. which they called mumia. But with such high demand That's for so your mom, after a while, they began to run out of stock. They're people! You were eating people! But they're You were using people. people as paint! Egyptian paint. You were. Uh, yeah. I'm j like, Old it's just people. so like. The levels of disrespect. But I don't speak the language. They're little weirdos. Oh my god. Oh my. Every time <laughs> I hear about it, I just get so upset. You started running out of... You started running out of people's ancestors to eat. But what a better repurpose program than human mulch. You know, we've been talking a lot oh about mulch. God. You don't think you could sell that? We were hoarding. Uh-oh. They were becoming rarer and rarer to find. They were being gobbled off the face of the earth. <laughs> A very specific demographic was doing this. They were being gobbled. The authorities passed a bunch of laws to protect mummies from becoming altogether extinct. Mm -hmm. These are the last two of their species, and they're both male, but they won't mate. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the mummy is much like the Tasmanian tiger. Every once in a while, one will just kind of show up yeah. and prove oh. that they're not oh, altogether no. extinct. <laughs> just, just here. Oh, oh, the year 2013. <laughs> the location, Dyfus in northwest Germany. Nice. We are at the Kettler household, owned by Grandfather Kettler, who is now dead. Damn. But he had a son, Lutz Kettler, and Lutz Kettler also had a son, Alexander they Kettler. They look all alike. And they are both there at the house. After a rainy day, there was a leak in the roof. So 10-year-old Kettler gets up into the attic Shut up. to explore. You know, have a bit of a look around. Shut There's up. a whole bunch of stuff in there. Old antiques, the art photographs, the and, oh, some old roof tiles. Nice. Those will be useful. So he goes over to the roof tiles, and, hmm, behind them Get is something strange. Here. A box. A mystery a box. Baby now, the kid is smart box. and he's seen Jumanji, so he knows not to touch the box and instead go tell his dad. Now, the dad drags oh, the box huge. into the center of the room. And he opens it. And inside... A smaller box. Okay. But it's very curious because it is covered in hieroglyphs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Lutz crosses his fingers, hoping nothing supernatural will happen. And he, opens, and he opens the inner box. Inside Are you is a me? mummy. Oh my god. That's we crazy. say mummy, which makes it sound nice, but we mean body. Yeah. There's a body in your attic. Yeah. It's a wrapped body. <gasps> yeah, please. I don't want to be mummified. Why in God's name would you want that? That would be so cool. And then, like, our descendants can, like, keep my body around. You're not getting mummified. <laughs> you get to be a tree, but I can't be a mummy. There's no reason why that I should be a tree and you shouldn't be a not be a mummy. Right. Right. Okay. So yeah. I should be a mummy. Except for the fact that I said no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to find a logical argument for this one. I accept that about myself. But having you wrapped up and dried up like a little, yeah, that's not a good. Uh, like a piece of skitten jerky. <laughs> They're going to be tempted to eat you. This wine is my blood. <laughs> <laughs> this jerky is my body. <laughs> There's also two smaller boxes. Oh my God! One contained a death mask and the other a canopic jar. Cool. All right, so he might have a dead body in the house. Yeah. Now. So naturally, he calls the authorities. The police show up and ask some questions. Lutz then explains a little bit of backstory. He remembers that in the 1950s, his father went to Derna in Libya. Mm -hmm. There, he acquired a chest and had it shipped back home. Wow. He remembers a conversation about it, but Grandfather Kettler insisted that it was a replica. Mm. Das ist ein 
replica son, son, son. <laughs> not a real mummified person. Now, at this point, the police did not think it was a real body, but it was worth getting it I mean, scanned it just look, in case. It looks like it could so he be loaded made. it up in his station wagon, and That's off he went to the Berlin Archaeological Institute. Now, they agreed to do a scan, and so they're fiddling with buttons and dials and stuff, and... Primary driver. It's fake, right? It's fake? Well, here's where things get a little more dramatic. Results... Inconclusive. Inconclusive. Yeah. Oh, there man. is a fully formed skeleton here. Oh, man. Now, that is unusual for a fake. Often a fake will just be shaped like a person, right. then filled with sticks and cloth <laughs> and rubbish. <laughs> However, it got even stranger. They found that all of the bones were wrapped in some sort of metal plating what? or foil. Next, they looked at the skull, and that's where things were the most odd. It was very realistic. Its teeth had roots. Its form was more intricate than the typical fake. It also had a laurel. But, even more notably, uh -huh. there was an arrowhead lodged oh in the eye Oh my god, socket. it's a dead person. It's like a real, actual I'm dead person. I'm so upset. I know, I hate this. He actually killed a person and mummified him and put him in your attic. Now you think that he killed was... him? Yeah. You took this to such a darker place. Now, oh, do you, do you think that's not what happened? I just thought he found a this is exactly what happened. Very unusual for a fake. Hold on, I got more evidence to do. So they're doing more tests and stuff. All right, we've carbon tested the linen wraps. Yep. What's it's the not verdict? Old. Well, those are from the 1900s. I fucking told now you. Now the plot That's is a thickening. Person. We have a supposed fake mummy, but with a okay. very realistic <laughs> skull, perhaps murdered by an arrow to the head right. and bandages that date to the modern day. Yep. That presents a new problem because it's not unheard of for people to do a murder in the modern oh day God. and then cover things up by disguising the body as an ancient artifact. For example, in the year 2000, there was a man who claimed he found the mummy of an ancient Persian I princess, that. Yeah. the daughter of Xerxes. Okay. However, when they examined the body, they found it was, in fact, a potential murder victim yep. from 1996 who died from bludgeoning. All right, so the police now actually have to get involved. Okay. And it's about to get even more complicated. So they confiscate the body and they do their own tests. And the results this time <laughs> say, nope, this thing is 2,000 years old. What? It's not fake at all. Uh, it's ancient. Okay. What? So eventually the experts all get together and go, okay, this is dumb. Let's take it to Eppendorf University and have it properly tested and not just tested. Crack the thing open like a delicious kinder surprise. Wow. So this new set of experts gets to work. And when they open up the mummy. All right, remember how we said that the bones were covered in a special type of foil or metal plate? <laughs> well, it turns out the scientists didn't quite get that right. Uh -huh. Instead, the bones were sprayed with a metallic chemical that prevented x-rays from going through. The bones were made from plastic, oh, okay. or at least the body was. Turns out the skull is real. What? Yes, a real skull, and not from an ancient mummy, but from a 20th century man. However, it was not a murder. Oh, this skull is from God, a- God, there's so many twists. There's a lot. Too happening. many twists. There's a lot. Cadaver. And it was medically prepared for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. And what about that arrowhead? Well, it turns out that that's there. from a children's toy. Someone yeah. just popped that in the eye socket as a joke. Because they're a dickhead. So finally, the mystery was solved. That's the most intricate prank I've ever heard of. Hilarious. Yeah. And, 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 he, and I bet you he died knowing. He probably did. Yeah. Yeah, he probably did. Just a plastic skeleton with a real dead guy's head put on it. Damn. Wait, how does that solve the mystery? Anyway, so Lutz was satisfied that the whole thing was fake and not a murder victim. Oh, let's put that back in the attic. Yeah, what do we do now? He said very Germanly. But then, ah, eine bitte? Was ist das? He says, another box? Come on. The Book of the Dead? <laughs> well, that sounds like a fun read. So Lutz starts reading the ancient <laughs> Egyptian out loud. Anaxunamun. Emo Tear, Brendan Fraser, <laughs> and what happened next will shock you and make for a very good thumbnail. Hilarious. Should have read it more Germany. Hey there, champ. What's up? You're probably wondering why I'm out here on this park bench. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes 
I just come to see the autumn leaves. That is pretty. Winter will be here soon. Dust in the wind. <sighs> Truth is, sport, I have a highly, highly contagious respiratory disease. Damn, that's fucked up. I won't be around much longer. Dust in the wind. <laughs> it's spitting on me. I'm like Willy Wonka from that movie. And you're like that ugly kid from the Willy Wonka movie who gets all his stuff. <laughs> or the Oompa Loompa. I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> the point is you're so close to being fancy. I can feel it. There's just one lesson left to learn. Okay. <laughs> anyway, speaking of ancient Egypt, you bastard. here's this ancient Egyptian gun. It <laughs> Franz Ferdinand? What are you doing here? Oh, no. Of course, he's not the real oh, no. Franz Ferdinand. He's a mummy. Now, the thing about the ancient Egyptian gun is that it's very sensitive. Oh, my God. Why are you uh -oh. doing this? Why do you keep... I hit your congratulations for being somewhat fancy, Kate. Oh. Oh. Come on, Mr. Ferdinand. We've got to clean this up before the Park Services Commission hears about this. <laughs> and they make another complaint. Another? Right, we're almost done with the series, and then it's back to the usual content. Okay. So in case you missed it, there's also it's, drinking it's on incognito. A new story mode out next week. Ooh. And if you like fancy, <laughs> that's great. But if you don't like fancy, don't worry, it's not forever. Mm. Goodbye. It took so much time to set the scene up. Yeah. Don't forget like NordVPN. NordVPN.com slash right. internet a story. We barely talked about oddities at all. Um... It was a lot less oddities in that video than I expected. I thought Taxidermy was gonna have like a huge- I was ready! We definitely prepped ourselves to be disappointed because we did like a whole little presentation, yeah. showed our little weird things, yeah. thought he was gonna join us. I was kind of imagining him in a room that was like dark, mm -hmm. full of taxidermy things. Yes. Kind of talking about the origin of drying out skins of animals and posting them on our walls. Mm -hmm. And he never made it there. You know, he should come shopping down here in Vegas. We have a lot of guys that do that here in Vegas. A lot of very skilled artists. Yeah. With a lot of very rare animals uh, dried up and put on their walls. You should check out the jellyfish. Which is weird, but cool. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. When you go in there, it's it's very culty and like, yeah. my mother would bless the oh, place God, she involuntarily. Would she would sneak in and put holy oil on the walls. Everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, so that's it. I think, is that it for the fancy series? He said there's one more He said left. there's one more. Check the playlist if you miss any other vids or if you just want to watch something else for funsies. Check out Skitten's channel for whatever we decide to do for her so you can have t fun doing that. And we're going to go hang out with Dr. D actually. So we have to skedaddle. Yeah, we got to go. Alrighty then. Bye. Peace.